morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome on this Lord's Day. Welcome to uh, what would have been an outdoor worship service, if not for the rain. Uh, welcome in the name of the living God, the one and all. Brothers and sisters, then, if you will, prepare your hearts and your minds to worship the living God. The call to worship today is Psalm 69, 30. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving.
A blessed are you, sovereign God. We confess that you never abandon what you have created, but continue to make known your grace always and ever, including to us. We thank you for all those you have chosen to speak your reconciling word in our day, and we pray for the faith to receive your word as we hear it. We confess that you are blessed, that you are holy, that you are righteous, that you are caring. And so we ask that you would hear the cries of the poor, that you would see the tears in the eyes of all who mourn, that you would know the pain of those in anguish, and that you would come to the side of the lonely. And we make that prayer trusting because we meet you in Jesus Christ. You desire abundant life for all. A living God, you call your church to compassion and service. And so we praise you that you are the God of peace. You call us to make wars cease and to place our trust in the one who bears us up in every circumstance. Give comfort and courage to all who work for peace among people and confound those who traffic in, in violence or terror. And you desire, a living God, a justice for all people, and so we pray for those who are persecuted or who are harried, who suffer for the sake of conscience. We pray that you would heal those who believe that destruction or persecution is the path of righteousness. And living God, we ask that you this day would turn us to your ways, make us bold, increase our passion for what is good, inspire us with the witness of those who have gone before us, whose faith shines through the ages. And so finally then, into your hands we place the welfare of all who we bring with us today in our hearts, those for whom we care. We remember and we lift up before you and we name in particular and especially Diane and Mike, William, Levi, Susan, Annie, Libby, Mike, and the Long family. Into your hands again we commend the care and keeping of each one and pray for a happy issue for each in their varied circumstances according to your wise providence. A living God, we trust in your mercy through your Son, even our Lord Jesus Christ, whose prayer we now pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. If you will, we'll join together again our voices in song as we sing the second hymn of today's service, hymn number 40, uh, singing all stanzas uh, for the beauty of the earth.
scripture lesson for today comes to us from 2 Corinthians in chapter 1, verses 8 and 9. And so if you will, listen for what the Spirit says to you. Listen for God's Word. We do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, of the affliction we experienced in Asia. For we were so utterly, unbearably crushed that we despaired of life itself. Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death so that we would rely not on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. Friends, may God bless the reading and hearing of this portion of God's holy word. About two weeks ago, 
In Ecuador, a 76-year-old retired nurse named Bella Matoya revived at her own funeral in the city of Babahoya. Her son said it gave us all a fright. You can imagine it would. And Bella was rushed back to the hospital's ICU where she did live for another week beyond her funeral. The Apostle Paul in today's lesson gives voice to the very real experience that we have of feeling despairing, of, of having things go so badly in different ways that we despair of life itself. Paul and his companions felt as though they had received a death sentence, but were compelled by difficult circumstances to rely, the text says, on the one who raises the dead, the one who brings life out of death. And some commentators understand what Paul, what Paul is referring to here as the flare-up of a chronic illness. It could be persecution, pushback that Paul is experiencing. It could be infighting in the churches in which he is working. In 2 Corinthians, which was written about a year after 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians is Paul's response to detractors who were saying, in essence, that he was suffering too much to be an apostle of the risen Christ. But metaphorically or literally in various ways, to, to bring life out of death, to bring hope out of despair, to make a way when there seems to be no way is, is what God does in the Bible story, is a running theme throughout the scriptural narrative. Paul exults in Ephesians chapter 2, but God being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Again, a running theme of Christian faith is that the end isn't always the end. The one who defeated death for us is ever and always at work in our lives. With Mark, with Mark Twain, because of God at work in our lives, we are able to say the rumors of our death are greatly exaggerated. And you may have had an experience similar to what the Apostle Paul is dealing with, had feelings similar to those the Apostle Paul is explaining in the reading today. It felt like circumstances were such that you were buried in despair. Perhaps it was a loss, the loss of a, a job or a relationship or a divorce or a diagnosis or the death of a loved one or issues at home or issues at work. It may have seemed like the end of the road, the end of hope, the end of life, but it wasn't. You were able to draw on something, to draw on someone to give you the strength to keep walking the road, to continue hoping to keep on living. It's been said that a pessimist is one who makes difficulties out of his opportunities. An optimist is one who makes opportunities out of his difficulties. And that sounds good, and it's probably true. The scripture lesson is getting at a little more than simply saying, when life hands you lemons, make lemonade. Paul seems to be saying, when all seems lost, when life seems over, you have someone, a, a source of strength, a source of hope, of perseverance, from which, from whom, to draw. The end isn't always the end. As of 2020, the Innocence Project has documented some 375 individuals who were incarcerated, many on death row, convicted of assaults and murders who have been exonerated by DNA evidence. People who were consigned by circumstance and an imperfect legal system to death received pardon and freedom, stepped out from under the shadow of death and into new life. That is what God in Christ does for us. Paul is holding out to us this morning a message of pardon and of hope. Where there is sin, God brings forgiveness and new beginnings. When there is death, God brings life. Where the circumstances seem overwhelming, God gives strength and hope to keep on keeping on. When all seems lost, God makes a way. Later in, in chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians, Paul will write, We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed 
We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be made manifest in our body. No matter how bleak the situation, even if it seems like life is over, and the world that you have known is coming apart at the seams, the end is not always the end, and there is life yet to live. We may have those moments we feel like despairing, but the Apostle holds out to us the one who raises the dead and is always and ever at work in our lives. Let us pray. The God of life and new beginnings, enable and empower us to see beyond the moment and to trust that you are with us and you are for us now and always. Amen. Friends, our sending hymn, the, the concluding hymn of the service and the hymn that launches us out into the adventure of the new week. Uh, hymn number 408, singing the first and last stanzas of I Am Mine, O Lord.